Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We have two phenomenal, phenomenal women in the studio, as I keep on saying, and that is because they are. A lot has come out recently with regards to sexual violence, and a lot of people are feeling cold right now. But some people have taken it upon themselves to develop a platform for those of us who may just need it. And two women from that platform, We Will Not Be Silent Lagos, are here with us today in the studio. We have Tammy Laura Bamidele, and we also have Imao Bong Umana, and they're going to tell us all about We Will Not Be Silent. Thank you so much for being Thank here, ladies. Thank you for joining us, Thank ladies. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank I think we should start off with asking what pioneered this movement? What stemmed We Will Not Be Silent? So basically last week there was a series of tweets of girls coming out about how they've been assaulted and things like that. So we, we just thought that something needs to be done. And it's so overlooked in the Nigerian community. So we're just like, okay, we're going to create this platform. We're going to use this as a way to reach out to schools, to talk to students, talk to parents as well, to talk to their kids and their boys and teach their boys about consent and not to rape. Now, if you look at lots of the tweets that came out, you know, there were these, some of these acts had happened months, years ago, mm -hmm. and they're only just picking up now. What would you say are some of the reasons why our, so our society, our country, Nigeria, Nigeria, finds a way to suppress people, victims, from speaking out? I won't call them victims, victors, you know, from speaking out. What are the things that we need to look out for? What are the changes that we need to make in this regard? Um, basically, in Nigeria, there's, um, there's encouragement, there's a platform for encouraging rape culture. And what rape culture is, is basically just, you know, sexual violence being normalized. And in that sense, the victims are the ones that are blamed. You know, people come out with their stories and they're blamed. You know, people come out and they're like, oh, why did you go to a party? And you, you find that there's no justice at the end of the day, the larger, you know, justice system when you go to that as well. I mean, statistically, there are about 250 rapes reported in Nigeria. And that is a staggering figure of like 91.6 are not reported. And out of those in the history of Nigeria, only 18 rape cases have been actually yeah. justified. And it's, you know, it's difficult for these people because, you know, there's a lot of stigma attached with being raped. You know, sometimes people who are actually raped, you know, it's like you can't get married anymore. And so many, you know, awful things, you know, come at these victims for telling their story and trying to get, vict um, to get justice at the end of the day. So, you know, the society has been able to harbor a place where people who rape people feel comfortable. I mean, someone said, you know, don't call me a rapist, I'm a sexual assaulter. Wow, and what's the difference? Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, you. you know, that's, that's one some of heat to take yeah, in. Yeah, like, I'm not a rapist, I'm a sexual assaulter. And it's like, it, there's a comfortable environment for people to, they're comfortable being what they are, and they don't even see it as I mean, wrong. last week we had a guest, Dr. Kel, on yeah. our show, and she put up a clip of the interview we had with her, because she was talking about the fact that we need to lecture more boys, that yes. there are boys that don't understand what rape is. And somebody went in the comment section and puts a very silly comment, and I'm, I'm even going to use him for content on my Instagram. <laughs> and he said, if a woman comes to my house, teases me, and just before we're about to have sex, decides that she doesn't want to have sex, is it okay if I choose not to rape her, but I beat her seriously? And I said, I would think that common sense should tell you, first of all, that that is assault. Yes. And that con um, consent at all points, consent is consent at all times. Yes. Consent before and even during the act. So yes. if at any point during the act, a woman says, stop, Yes. And you decide to continue any further penetration is rape. Mm -hmm. And if you're assaulted, you go to jail. So we have a mindset that we need to see change and we need to see a shift in this regard. Absolutely. So how are we hoping to educate more people? How, how, how far can we spread our reach in this regard? I think we can go nationwide. We can literally educate everyone. But we have to start from the base, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I feel like the parents, parents need to talk to their children, teach them, teach the boys especially, that no means no and what consent is because when I a few of the people who had been accused reached out to me and they explained that they just didn't understand what things like coercion were they understood consent but they didn't understand that whilst you're in the act and they say stop it means stop they felt entitled to feeling like we must finish whatever is going on here and they feel that they're entitled to women's bodies so I think we could start from the parents and then schools I really we really believe that in schools they should make it a thing where they teach because when I was in when I was in school in England I had sex education classes and they taught us all these things but when I speak to students a lot of the people who message were actually students in Nigeria so when I spoke to them they just complained that yeah we don't get any education on these things that's why people feel like they can do these things to us so I think from parents and schools and then to make it compulsory as well so 
ho hopefully at the end of the day we get maybe government support or whatever mm -hmm. to make to implement it in schools by force so people mm -hmm. know that you have to teach children about these things or they'll carry on doing what they're doing absolutely and since this all started on social media last week a lot of people were shocked there were some men who had about 22 <coughs> allegations against them etc and it created and fueled a ripple effect do you by any chance know if in any way the government have, um, has picked up on this if there have been any prosecutions made has the power of social media really taken effect in reality? Well, really for now, there were just allegations on social media. They hadn't actually, you have to file a report, yeah. you know. And the thing is, first off, we just want to get these victims to feel comfortable and confident enough to even go to the police. And from going to the police, then they can go into the justice system, you know, and that's another ball game entirely. They, you know, it's, we have to have a two-pronged approach, you know, we're trying to create awareness and eventually we're trying to get to the government, you know, but that's our wider plan. Initially, we're just trying to create awareness, make people understand that, you know, you cannot objectify women, you know, they're not pieces of toys, you know, they're not items that you can just, at any point in time, do what you want with, you know. What's it called? Bodily integrity is extremely fundamental, you know. It's the same thing with assault. It's the same thing with everything else, you know. I don't know why rape is trivialized. You know, it's, 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 it's the same bodily integrity that we're fondling and messing up with. So, you know, we're just trying to create awareness now, mm. create awareness and make people understand, you know, the value of consent, the, un, understand in depth what consent actually is and what it's not. You know, some people think silence is consent. You know, some people think if you manipulate someone to get consent, it's consent. I'm glad that you really yes. mentioned mm -hmm. the manipulation part because we find incidences where someone is being coerced and controlled mm -hmm. yes. to give their consent. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you check the criminal code, there are express explanations of what consent is mm -hmm. and what consent mm -hmm. is not. Yes. So you put a you put a drink, you put a tablet or a pill in a woman's drink mm -hmm. to make her give her consent. That's consent ob obtained by fraud. Yes. So you're fraudulently obtaining her consent. Of That's course, right. you are as guilty as someone who even did not get consent, and yes. then you're, you're equally punished as well. Yeah, so absolutely. we need to keep pushing these messages out. And we know you have a walk coming up in this regard. Oh, yes. Tell us about the walk. So the walk is on Saturday, the 14th of July, and we start at St. Serio Zikoi. We're just going around, and basically it's just to promote awareness again, like we keep saying awareness, but that's just what this is all about right now. Mm -hmm. So we're walking around and then we have we have people coming about. We have about, I'd say right now, we have about 300 people who have reached mm -hmm. us, reached out to us to attend the walk. So we're going to walk around from um, Dan Alexander to um, Gerard and then round Kingsway Road and then past Falamore, then back to St. Xavier. So it's almost like a circle round. So when we're walking, we have banners, we have flyers, we have people, so many people interested. It's kind of, it's overwhelming, but I love it because mm -hmm. it's like so many people are supporting this. Mm -hmm. And I just want to add to what she said. Also, the parents of the people who have been accused, mm -hmm. you need to stop enabling your children. Mm -hmm. These people, some of the people, someone with 22 allegations against their name can come out and say, oh, yes, I didn't do this. And I feel like with parents, you should tell them that, look, this is wrong. But from other people I've heard, these people's parents are enabling them. Mm -hmm. They're calling the victims. They are sh making them feel ashamed. This is mm -hmm. why people don't want to speak up, because yeah. they're being attacked. They're being personally attacked. And these girls are, most of the girls that, we've, were, that came out, they're younger. They're much younger. They're in their Give teens. us an age range. I can give you from about, it's shocking, but from about 11 to 11. 19. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of the things that happen on Twitter, 11 to 19. So it's like, they're, just, they're scared. They're mm -hmm. really scared. And these guys are older than them. Some of them mm -hmm. are older than Boys them. Boys as young as so, 15 and 16 have yes, been accused exactly. of sexual assault yeah. and rape. And exactly. it's honestly, it's honestly very, it's very devastating to mm -hmm. think about. But what exactly are your aims and objectives from this walk? What response do you want to get from the Lagos State Government? Um, well, Lagos State Government has been doing their bit as well. I think it's the DR, DRT, the SVRT. Yes, yes, DRT. DRT. yes, and they've been doing their bit as well. We hope, you know, by raising awareness, they see that, you know, it's actually more serious than they thought it was. And it's happening in the younger generation as well. It's not just older women, you know, and it's not just marital rape. It's, you know, it's young people from the age of, as you said, 12, 13. Mm -hmm. They're very young people. And, you know, with regards to male rape as well, you mm -hmm. know, it's something that's not yeah. really talked about. But, you know... It's part of the enablement of rape culture is that there's hyper masculinity and it's like men who speak up, you know, are seen as weak yeah. and they're seen as, you know, um, lesser than other men because they're supposed to be strong and they're supposed to fight. I know this hasn't got anything to do with Nigeria, but Terry Crews, you know, yeah. came out recent, recently and you see what um, 50 Cent and the rest were coming out to say, you know, making it look like, oh, you have muscles and it's like, you know, it's. 
you don't shame victims for coming out. To Whether male or female, we need to allow yeah. them. Yeah. We need to create yes. an enabling environment. Well, yes. One in eight men to today feel... in Nigeria are victims yeah. of rape. One in yes. three women. The statistics mm -hmm. are heinous on both sides yeah. of yes. the, you know. But Lagos mm -hmm. State Government, um, Ambode recently signed in a 25-year jail term for um, perpetrators of sexual and domestic violence. Mm. Tammy Loran, um, Imana, do you think that this is enough? Do you think this is enough or do we need more? Is a 25-year jail term for perpetrators enough or do we need more? Personally, I think before even getting to 25 years, we need to make sure people are getting arrested, you know, and that is what the government hasn't really been able to do. Yeah. I mean, in Nigeria, only 18 convictions so far. So we need to make sure the victims are actually being getting, they're getting their justice, you know, 25 jail term is yeah good jail term is good is good. I think All right, good we, we definitely want to see more responses mm -hmm. like this. I want people to understand that if you're being raped, if you're being sexually assaulted, you need to speak up. You need to you need to speak up because in speaking up, you're ensuring that other people don't fall victims of the same thing that you have you know gone through. And we understand your pain, and we're here for you. We support you. We we'll continually speak up for this. If you get raped, please, the first thing you do is go to a hospital, see a, a doctor to examine you, and after that, go to the police station. That way you're collecting evidence to be able to fight against this person. Together we will speak up, we will fight against these ills and we will get justice. Thank you Silence very much for is joining violence. us. Thank you so much. How can people follow you on social media for more information? Okay, so you can reach us on our Twitter and Instagram page, the same handle, WWNBS Lagos. Yeah. And yeah, just drop us a DM. Mm -hmm. comment, whatever, like, subscribe. Okay, yeah. so the walk is taking place this Saturday, starting outside St. Xavier's School in Ikoi. It's going to be going around Lagos, and if you do want to partake, then just be there. At what time? At 8 a.m. At 8 a.m. To enjoy more of these our Ogunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.